So we may have uh, some people coming in as well. Uh, so uh, let me start off by saying I'm Mike Shannon. I'm the Development Services Director here for the city. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, this is and this is our noise ordinance task force meeting. Uh, for those that are here for the first time, welcome. For those that, that have been working through it uh, since the summer, thank you for continuing to be part of it. Uh, it's an important issue, I think, for the city that uh, we'll continue to work on. Uh, I see it for the next uh, probably several months or so uh, as we try to work through uh, the issue at hand and, and try to you know, find some solutions. Uh, and uh, those of you that. Uh, that have been part of it, you know uh, some of the topics. And we'll have uh, a lot of discussion tonight, but a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, anyone that came in, we have some food available for anybody, not just people on the task force, but certainly those of you that are here. Um, I'm not allowed to take any of that food home, so help me out, please. Uh, but feel free um, to help yourself uh, during the meeting at all, and uh, uh, it won't be a distraction. So uh, that was item number one. Number two, if you need a restroom during the meeting, uh, there's two things you can do. You can climb down the stairs, go through the front there, and there's uh, one through the lobby, kind of that direction. But the easiest thing to do is walk through this door, head down as far as you can to run into the break room, hook a right, and you'll run into the restroom. So I uh, uh, just wanted to kind of mention that. Uh, third, this is kind of something new. Uh, we have, uh, is it Scott or Taylor? Taylor. 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 Is Taylor with, I'm sorry? My middle name is Scott. Okay, it's on your tag, that's why. I think they put, they must have got it from ID. Uh, Taylor is here, and I don't know, uh, let's say Taylor is gonna, he's with? Uh, now Cast SA. Now Cast SA. Um, someone has invited them to this meeting, and they see, come on, have a seat. Um, and here, you're gonna record the meeting, uh, your plan is to record the meeting for Now Cast, and give it to them. Give it to them, and I don't know what happens to them. Okay. Nice, so. So uh, I want this is the first time we've done that here with this meeting set up. I want to make sure everybody knew that. Um, I'm not really sure who invited uh, them, but they're welcome, of course. This is an important meeting for us all to kind of participate in. Uh, but whenever we have an unannounced video recording of a meeting, I like to just let everybody know it's being recorded. I think we do this on our Zoom calls now and all that. It's kind of the normal thing. Uh, so we're not. Uh, but but certainly, I also want to give anybody if you're not comfortable with that and you didn't want to participate, that's certainly okay too. Uh, but I think we're going to continue with the meeting. And uh, but just thank you for being here. Yeah, and uh, whoever invited them, thank you if you're one of you or someone else. Uh, maybe someone else that couldn't be here and wants to uh, watch the meeting later. Okay. That being said, um, I'd like to start with, uh, we have an agenda tonight, right? And we're going to continue our discussion on uh, kind of where we left off. We know we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll try to get you out of here right about 8 o'clock. For those of you in the audience, we call you our community members. We have a task force that's been assigned to kind of work through this and on this. Um, and they've been doing that uh, really well. It's a challenging issue uh, over the last six months. We have community members, although you are allowed to uh, just try to listen, take notes at the end of the meeting, somewhere around the hour and 40 minute mark. We will open it up for comments from you all. So if you haven't been here before, I think some of you have been here before, you know how it works. Uh, but the, the, the task force, which includes some of us city staff, uh, will, will be looking for any input that you want to, want to give us, okay? Uh, now, you're not required to. I'll just kind of open it up, and we'll go in an orderly fashion. Uh, but that being said, um, there will be other meetings like this. There will be other community meetings that are just really open to the community and, and the task force. Some of them will attend or not. But uh, just to give you a format as we move forward. Does that sound about right? Everybody understand any questions with that format? I don't think so. I think we've had a lot of people here. Uh, now, we do have an agenda. We're going to use, um, for the screen tonight, uh, we're going to try to use some microphones here. If anybody in the audience can't hear the discussion, just let us know. We'll get a microphone where we need to. Um, I will ask our task force members uh, certainly to, uh, uh, to speak to the microphones if you can. Uh, unless you're super loud and everybody can hear you. Does that sound about right? All right. Uh, we got Art uh, driving, uh, driving it for us. He's going to do some introductions, kind of a roll call for the meeting uh, of the task force members that are here and present, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump into uh, some of the agenda. Okay? Thanks again, everybody, for being here. Please, no one has moved. Ever since I said there's food here, no one has moved. So, all right. This, I'll, I'll check on that food in a little bit. Okay, we'll get started. All right, we'll start with our introduction slash roll call. Good evening. 
everybody. We are going to start a roll call for our noise task force. Gemma Kennedy. Here. Gemma Kennedy. Here. Steve Versteed. There. Steve. Thank you, Steve. How about Bianca Maldonado? Here. Pat Patricia Garcia Duarte. Colleen Wagusback. Here. Here. Thank you. Martha Solomon. She's, she's Martha she's Solomon. She's right here. Okay. okay. Uh, Gina Eisenberg. Gina? No. Blaine Tucker. Blaine Tucker. Don Larios. Jody Bailey Newman. David, I'm going to fill in for Jody today. David Euler. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jared Pena. Jared? I'll fill it in. Sergio Acosta. Sergio Acosta. Thank you, sir. Sergio, would you mind? Uh, if you're going to fill in as an alternate tonight, <laughs> you mind sitting at the task force yeah. table for us? Thanks, man. Yeah. Sam Aguirre. He's not here. All right. Byron Burkus. I'm Sam's alternate tonight. Thank you. Parker. John Dusky. Present. John. Thank you, John. John Brenneman. John Brenneman. Thank you. Randall Smith. He's been reassigned. I'm here. Thank you. Captain. Mean Tomas. Here. Thank you, sir. Talita Wright, Felix Ramirez, and then I think we're at Michael Uresti, Danny Liggins, here. Thank you, sir. Jeremy McDonald, Jeremy. Paul Jimenez. Jenny Ramirez. Here. Denise takes the initiative. <coughs> Samantha Whitwire. Here. Ashley Daisy. Ashley. David Dotson. David. Anissa Shell. Maldonado. No. Jimena Coco Williams. Here. Stacy Jones. Margaret Leeds. Bo Anderson. I can feel it for Margaret. No. Bo is here, yes. Bo is here, thank okay. you. And I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll explain in a second. So we'll just keep going down the list. I'll explain. Marcos Barros. Marcos. David Fuller. Oh, David's here. Yeah, he's Thank you, there. David. Yeah. We have Andy Rodriguez. Christine Hill. Here. Gina Eisenberg. Renee Zamora. <laughs> Renee Zamora. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Mark. All right, so what we did there, just to scroll up a little bit, I just want to make sure uh, everybody understands. Go all the way up. So the first thing we do is we take a roll call of our task force members. That's kind of all the way up until we get to Savita Rice. Okay? And some of the people have alternate, so we're pretty tracking kind of attendance and participation on this uh, task force. Uh, those other names there are some additional city staff and others who have commonly participated. Uh, I'm going to ask Amanda uh, in, in our office to 
Uh, if you want to, because this is your first time here, if you want to uh, sign in, give us your name, your email, and your phone number, we'll add you to the list. Uh, you're here because you were contacted, which is good. Uh, but if you want us to add this to the list, just for uh, kind of record keeping uh, in the future, that'll help us. But uh, we'll have that up in a little bit. Uh, but thank you, Art. Uh, my question to the task force members, one of the things we always look at now is do we have enough people here uh, to really have a good discussion? Uh, you know, quorum issue, we know it's a, we don't have to have a quorum, but we have, uh, how many of us here? Three, uh, seven, eight, well, seven or eight before we get to the seven? Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven before you get to city staff and then you have the three city staff. Uh, everybody's comfortable moving forward with some discussion? Yeah. On the agenda? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Good? Don is here. I'm sorry? Don. Oh, did, wait. Did Don come in? Did I miss her? Oh, Don. You're on the tax force. Come on up. This is, I know we haven't done any in person like this. Don, how are you? Fine. Come on in. Have a seat at the tax force table if you're okay. Oh, sure. You know, there's a couple of seats here. We can roll a couple more. Okay. I didn't see you sneak in. All right, let's mark her as president. Okay. All right, let's go back to the agenda. All right, uh, so the last meeting we had, the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, look at the meeting minutes from last meeting. Uh, those have been posted for a little while, and we just ask if, if there's any comments or questions on those from the task force members, or if everybody's okay with it, we'll, we'll uh, you know, kind of take a motion to approve, or if everybody's thumbs up. Doesn't have to be too formal. Um, but is everybody okay with the meetings that uh, meeting minutes from last meeting? They accurately represent? Yes. Okay. I think generally everybody feels good about that. Uh, for those in the audience uh, or the, the community members, uh, we do actually post all the stuff on our website. If you missed the meeting or want to follow the history of the meeting, just go and you can skim through the uh, task force meeting minutes. It's pretty simple. Okay? All right. So I think I'm going to take everybody's head nodding and nobody yelling or screaming at me as uh, those are good to go. Okay, uh, we'll go to the back to the um, back to the agenda. All right. So we want to take a few minutes and I'm going to let Amin and, and uh, our team go over uh, the update. You know, we have not only this task force, but another thing that's happening in conjunction is our pilot program. Uh, which is our, our noise enforcement, utilizing code officers on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. So we want to give you the updated uh, numbers, uh, statistics, and kind of some lessons learned. And I want the task force to kind of review those uh, and talk about anything you deem important. Okay? So if we could, I mean, I'm going to let you go through that. I'm going to hand over the mic. Yeah, yeah. John? Yeah. Hey, John, how are you? I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm retired, and I, the, the traffic... Yeah, no, you're good. You're good, man. Yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Amin Thomas. I'm the Deputy Director here at Development Services. Um, I was tasked by my boss, my channel, to basically work on this task force, and um, it's a challenge. But uh, hopefully, we will get to um, a good area where everybody is happy, or as happy as possible. So as Mike said, you know, we have a pilot program. Uh, for those who don't know that, um, in the past, basically, we have the noise ordinance. Uh, SAPD is responsible for enforcing that ordinance for, for multiple years in the past. Uh, we were ordered by um, the mayor and, and council to basically help PD because they want to reduce their uh, workload a little bit on anything that is not really super emergency like that murder or robbery in progress and things like that. So we are trying to, trying this program only for three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 uh, p.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, we respond to the calls that PD gets. Uh, the calls still go through PD, through their dispatch, but then we go out there and we respond to them, or to as many as we can. We have six code officers uh, that they cover the whole city. So basically, we cannot get to every single call that they are receiving. So this is the information and some updates. Can you scroll up? So this table, if you look at it, you, you have two columns. The left column is last weekend, basically, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The one on the right is the total so far. Uh, we, uh, we started on uh, October 7th. So basically about eight weeks or nine weeks, weekends, that's the total. 
So basically, the, the, the total uh, for the program right now on those three days, people received over 4,000 calls on those three days. We responded to about 35% of them. So we managed to get out to 1,464. We physically went out to those locations and we inspected those locations. Out of those 1,465, there were 189 locations that we confirmed uh, violations. And the way we do it is we have the meters, the DB meter, sound meter. We get the readings, and we get multiple readings, and we make sure we take average. Uh, if it's way up high, higher than the limits, then we, we say it's violation. We take picture of the reading, and then we dispatch that or uh, send that back to PD so they can go out there and issue citations. So out of those uh, 189, uh, PD issued 99 citations for those. There was about 68 locations that we were not able to get to, so what that means is we got the call, we get out there, and let's say it's a house party, and there's 50 people in that front yard, screaming, yelling, kicking, whatever, drinking. We are not peace officers, we don't have any tools, any uh, weapons, anything, so we tell our team to not stop, just keep going and send that call back to PD, because again, their safety is very important. Any questions about those numbers? <coughs> okay. So the same numbers that we just showed you, we broke it down by council district. I know this is a question that uh, task force members mentioned in the last couple of meetings, that can you break it down to council districts? So we know which, which districts, I guess, have more or less. And then can you break it to residential or, or business, commercial? Because obviously we're getting a lot more residential calls than commercial. So again, this is by district. It shows you a column for all the residential calls that we responded to, the businesses, and then Riverwalk. The reason why we, we put Riverwalk by itself, it is business. But remember, in the current code today, the business have a 70 dB during the day, and at night it drops to 63. The river walk has 70, 24 hours, so it doesn't change. That's why we listed that separate, so you know that the readings we are getting for river walk to be in violation needs to exceed 70 any time during the day or all night that way. Uh, any questions about these calls? And again, these are only the calls we refer to PD. The 189, remember that number? So this is the 189 calls that we received and confirmed violation. Then this one is the 99 citations that uh, SAPD issued. Remember, we, we confirmed 189 violations, PD issued 99 uh, citations for, for some of those, for 99 of them. And this is how it's broken by a district, residential, business, and river law. So again, as, as uh, Mr. Shannon said, basically um, the task force is the one that going to be um, basically interacting with this conversation and discussing these issues. If they have questions, they are welcome to ask it. Uh, at the end of the meeting, the last 20 minutes or so, we'll open it up to the public. So any questions? Uh, I yes, have sir. comments for later, but specifically related to the data, if you're investigating about 35% of the calls, how are the calls being triaged to respond to or not respond to? Great question. So I don't know if everybody heard the question. The question is, we responded, code enforcement responded to 35% of the calls that PD received. How are those being triaged? How are we picking against the calls? So the way this works right now is, as I mentioned, we have six code officers citywide, and we have a supervisor on duty at that day. Every time PD gets a call, the first call they get from 8, 8 p.m., they send it to us. So we dispatch the first code officer. We get the second one, we send the next code officer, and so forth. Then we line up at least four calls for each code officer. When I have four calls, and they are already on another one, so that's five in a row, we don't want to wait longer than that. 
Because remember, the whole purpose of this pilot is to respond as fast as we can. I don't want to have more than four in a queue for each code officer. So then if additional codes come in, we tell PTU you guys handle those. So they handle them. Until we free a couple of code officers or a couple of codes, then we again keep stacking those in a row. So we always have four in a row in a queue for each code officer. So we don't pick and choose. We might get all residential, we might get all businesses, we might get mixed. We, we have no idea which one we're going to get. It depends on when the call came in. I think to summarize, John, I think we're, we're really right now looking first come, first serve calls. Uh, I think part of the discussion moving forward is how, how, would, how would we in the, in the next three months or so, if we modify the procedures, should we prioritize them a little bit differently? Uh, if, the, if the task force has any recommendations, uh, this would be the time we could try some things out. Uh, I think, you know, I think for the first three months, though, it's important to try to just get to as many as they come in as they come in. Um, but I hope that answers the question. Well, it does, right. first. So if one investigator is, is, has four cases and they happen to be in an area where they subsequently, after his four or her four cases, there are three calls that come in about a particular business, but that this individual's queue is filled, then those three case, those three calls could potentially not be investigated if it is a first come first serve and then you roll it to the next group of current complaints. I would, I would not say they will not be investigated because they're gonna be transferred back to PD. Uh, technically, they come to PD we tell them we are maxed out right, right. now. So they continue taking those calls and yes. they will respond to them. So they still respond to the calls. You said that there are calls that are not investigated and then when that person is freed up, then they will investigate current calls or they go back to the hour or two before? No, sorry for the confusion. So the code officer will not investigate all the calls that PD is getting. Oh, that's correct? for sure, yes. So any calls that we did not get to and investigate, PD is still doing that. They are still taking care of those codes. So we are not saying if code doesn't respond, then just put those codes on the side. No, PD will take the codes and will respond to it. So they are still doing their job. Oh, oh that's right. right. And I think we are helping with 35% yeah. of their workload. But let, me, let me help you clarify, and I think this is something, this is, this is what we're learning. So the calls that we can get to is code enforcement. Code enforcement has one priority that night. Right, that, that's all they're doing. They're not doing other not normal code enforcement stuff. They're not you know, tall grass or no vehicles or anything like that. When, when it does, if we're full, meaning our capacity, because this pilot program was, it's not the end all be all solution, but it is, here's, here's six resources, see what we can learn, see what we can do, either different, better, worse, whatever that is. When it goes back to PD, and I don't want to speak to Kathy here, but they have a priority of calls. And they're, the PD is doing other things, and you're right, it's, it's not the top priority like it is for code at that, that evening. So again, that's some of the challenges we're working through and learning from, but um, so I think if we, if we think about that, and Captain, did I say anything, did I say anything incorrect? I mean, I, I forget how many priorities. And you, you have so many calls that you list, but this five or six or seven priority levels, right? Um, so I think that's, that's the balance we're trying to strike down, and I think for the task force is, how do we handle that? I mean, during the pilot program is one thing, but what are we learning that we can recommend at the end uh, to our, you know, council, our budget resources, etc. Uh, what's the best way to handle that? So, I, John, I think it's a good point you made out. I wrote a couple notes, but something we're going to have to follow as we move forward, and, and I think that we're learning from some of the data. So, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'll tag team on this. Okay, so just to understand the process fully, so if if code enforcement backlog is full, let's say, then, then it stays with SAPD. And so now both SAPD and code enforcement are working off a of backlog. Yours is limited, SAPD's is unlimited backlog, right? They, they're gonna take care of, you have a limit on yours. So later on, say two hours later, your backlog's gone. Do they, do they never send those they still have a backlog, they don't send those to you because you already rejected them? That's a really good question. I don't know. Captain, you know. So, just for clarification on the, on the PD side of the house, um, PD receives calls continually through the PSAP and 911 operators, 
And those calls get prioritized based on the type of call they're used, whether it's currently active or it's a report, uh, if there's danger currently to the public or, or, or not. Uh, as uh, Mr. Shannon already suggested, we have seven priority calls. Uh, priority ones would be uh, something that has an active uh, element to it, uh, whether it be a shooting, robbery in progress, something to that effect, and there is danger to the public that then proceeds down a list of, of uh, various categories. Um, say, for example, like a family violence, that would be a priority three. Uh, general disturbance would be a priority four. Loud music is priority seven. So it's the, it's the lowest of the priority calls for us. Um, what that means is that throughout the evening, and this is dealing primarily with evening type calls, throughout the evening, our queue for each six of the substations, each dispatcher will have their call filled by the PSAP, and it will begin to prioritize those calls. So every time anything above a priority seven comes in, it's going to push that priority seven down. So even if I priority six, comes in, uh, a reckless driver, non complaint that's a priority six call. So that will push the priority seven call down and it will continually push that priority seven call down until there's finally an officer available to respond to that call. Um, on busy nights, that can be several hours. On non-busy afternoons, that could be 10 or 15 minutes. Um, there's no way to predict how long that priority seven will continually remain pushed down further and further into that being said, all of the calls that code is unable to respond to, they go to our queue. And they will eventually get responded to in some way, shape, or form. Uh, how long? It just depends on the business of the night and the side of town. Right, so the question was, once they're in your queue, Correct. they will never come back out to go into their queue. They can pull them back to their queue whenever they'd like. Um, if their officers finally finish up with their, uh, with their backlog and they're ready to receive additional calls, then by all means they can pull them off of our off of our channels whenever they would like. Uh, I would not recommend that they go back in in uh, in call order. I would recommend that they would take the next call in line as, as far as what call has come in because they're the greatest likelihood that, that disturbance or problem is still ongoing. If something's been waiting in our queue for two hours, a priority seven disturbance is probably not still going on by the time they get there, so they're basically wasting gas and time to drive over there to find nothing. So the, the better option would be they get that next call that has just recently come in uh, for the greatest chance of success in being able to record that call. Okay, sounds like maybe we don't know if what you just suggested is happening. So can yeah, and I'm not sure. I think, no, no, I, I think we do, Steve, and I, I, but I think your point is uh, we need to take a look at our dispatch and how it can get back into, I mean, it's a constant moving more calls are coming in, but I, I, I mean, if you have a recommendation, uh, you know, that would be good, but, if, but I think through this discussion, we can take that and, and, and work a little bit closer with, with uh, Captain and the dispatchers with our field. I mean, they're on the, they're on the radio all, all night long. Um, but just, is it your suggestion that we, we make sure that if a call gets back to PD, that it still has the opportunity to get back to code that same night? Well, I didn't make there? a suggestion, he did. And it was a good one. I, I just don't know. Okay. But you got, uh, Amin didn't know the answer. He answered mm -hmm. it. So it sounds like there could be a disconnect. Maybe there's not, but there mm -hmm. could be a disconnect on whether his suggestion is even can and even does okay. happen. And, and, and to be, that. Yeah, to be clear, I've not worked the code enforcement in the evening. So I'm not exactly sure how they're being dispatched. I'm just trying to explain to you the process right. of dispatching the call. Right. Uh -huh. So let, let me let me try to clarify again, Elizabeth. Maybe I wasn't that clear. I have six call officers. We get this as to understand. We get the first six calls. Every officer gets one. We get the next six calls. Everybody have another one end line in queue. Then we get another six. Then another six. Every call officer have four in queue. I finish one. I get another one. So I will never be free because I think you mentioned. When code officers are completely done, what happens to the calls from PD? We don't wait till we are done. We always have four in a queue. And as you can see from the numbers, I mean, we are doing only 35%, and we always have something in our queue till our shift is over. So I don't think we have the capacity to take anything from them anyway, because we are taking whatever we can and we keep going. So the four Even if I have more code officers that are Okay, so I, to this, this I, I understand program. that. Yeah, so, so you're saying till four in the morning, everyone has a, a, 
four in a row. Yes. Okay. I mean, we, we keep our queue, I guess, available for the products so they don't really stop working. Right? They keep going from one phone to the other. Yeah, and there's yes. a, a, another thing we talked about before, and I don't, we haven't solved this yet. Actually, when they do give the violations, then SATD gives the citations. And so there's that, sometimes they can't give the citations. So you see the violations, even though they were giving a lot of citations, not as many as they have to be done by SATD. And I remember, I think, mentioned earlier, and just to put it out there again, that when they did this before, they were uh, actually had some peace officers who acted as code uh, for code compliance, and they were able to give the citations at the same time. And so I don't know if we want to mix them, you know, because, you know, I know at this point it's high level, but I'm just looking down the pipe. These are a lot of calls <coughs> coming in and then how to sort them. This is a lot of work. There's a lot of noise going on, and so you're gonna get all kinds. And also, I'm not sure, uh, some of these things that we're looking at, uh, they don't result in violations, but we don't have the information is why do they keep calling? So what is it for people, what is the noise that they keep hearing that they're calling in? that don't actually meet the decibel levels. And I don't know if there's any way to track that or really understand it. Seems there's a lot of calls here that we're not addressing. Yeah, no, definitely, General, good, good comments. Um, yes, technically, a long time ago, code enforcement had some peace officers, and they used to do that task or this task. Um, for a long time now, we don't have peace officers. Um, so that should be an open discussion for the task force down the road on what, what's the recommendation going to be. But uh, for the time being, yes, we do go out there, we, if we find violation, then we send it to, to PD to issue the citation. And um, I mean, Captain can explain a little bit more, but definitely, again, based on the priorities they have, uh, even when we send it back to them for citation, potentially, if they show up you know, two hours later, sometimes the party is over. If it's a house party and they're done, Everybody sleep, they're not going to go and wake them up. And that's why some of those uh, violations are not issued citations at that point. Dr. Tomas, can you talk a little bit about when you guys are evaluating whether or not, uh, when the code enforcement officers are evaluating whether or not there's a violation? I'm, I would assume there's some sort of protocol that everyone's following on this. Is that is that public? Is that something that you guys have kind of coalesced around that you're standardized on? Let me make sure I understand your question. You're saying how are they getting the readings, I guess, or how are they going to confirm you, the you, you had mentioned that they're taking averages from different, from different areas. I'm curious as to whether or not there's a protocol that's standardized to make a determination as to whether there's a violation. Well, again, yes. So, so based on the current code now, it says to get the reading at the property line. So obviously, if it's safe enough for the code officer to stand there, that's where they stand. Now, sometimes they get to the property and they cannot stand at the property line, so they might go around the property to find them anywhere they can stand and safely. And then they get the reading. Obviously, you don't just take the reading and get like one number and you say this is it, because again, sounds fluctuates, right? And you want to get a little bit, you know, like a range. So the device will give you the, the number at this moment and will give you the, the, the average as long as it's on and, you know, you're looking at it. So if you wait 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you kind of got that range and it tells you the average. Again, the requirement of the allowed uh, dB is, let's say, 70 dB, but then we are getting 80 or 82 dB as an average, then that's a violation. Is, is, is this written down anywhere? Is there, yeah, yeah, which, is there a written protocol? Yeah, so internally, and I'll answer the question, I think you're asking if we created an internal SOP to be able to, yeah, we do. When we started this program, uh, we, we purchased some meters for the six code officers, actually the three shifts for the six code officers, about 25 or 30 of these yeah. suckers. Um, and then we, we wrote down and trained our staff on how to take the readings and what to do for our current ordinance. So we do have that SOP right now. And they're estimating where the property line is? And they go out there and they take the I mean, it's, Yeah, most of them are very obvious, but I mean, we don't have a, 
plat of the property, if you will. It's an estimate. It's an estimate. Well, based on based on field observation, I'm sure. Yeah. Most of the properties are fenced, or you know, you have some kind of outline. You can't tell roughly. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I, this is good conversation because this is important information that's helping us move it along. However, it's time check. I'm just going to say it's 6.38 and we have several things, including uh, some sound uh, experts or engineers. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just some folks that we've asked to come and talk to us. So, uh, but, but I don't want to stop the conversation. I'm just going to go to the time check, right? But there was a question. Did, did you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Colleen, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Uh, so say it's not a house party, it, it's a, an, an establishment, and you get a call and a code officer goes out and verifies that there is genuinely a violation. When the officer gets there, if he's not hearing that, can he still issue a citation? I mean, if the code enforcement has the meter reading, I would think he could still do that. Is that correct? They are doing that. Yes. Okay. They can't do that. They're legally allowed to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If we're lucky enough to have a slow night, and um, you know a police officer is unlucky enough to have to do those <laughs> level sevens, are they carrying the the noise meters, the devices that measure decibels? Are they carrying those in their cars? No. Um, the patrol officers do not have any decibel readers in the vehicles themselves. Each substation has one assigned to it for chronic problems and for the safe officers that are community-oriented police officers that work uh, specific target problems, but the patrol officers themselves are not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments on this agenda item for now? I think we took out some good notes and uh, again, part of my job as timekeeper facilitator, right, is, is to make sure we get the most, if not all, of the agenda. So, um, okay, so what's the next item? I mean, going to the agenda. We're going to talk about the uh, the homework. I'm sorry, the assignment. Uh, I'm not supposed to call it homework. I'm not sure why, but some people didn't like that. We asked you to do an assignment. So one of the questions, uh, task force members, right? We've been talking decibels since day one, right? And many of us before. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much about. It. We had some people that are going to talk a little bit later uh, about it. Uh, now this is not a scientific. Um, study that we've asked you all to do, but we just asked you all, we, we all agreed, the staff force agreed, let's, let's have some fun, let's download, which is probably strike one, we downloaded an, an app, one of the sound apps that we found, right, the sound meter app that you can put on your smartphone because it's easily accessible, and we asked you all to uh, do a little homework, walk around uh, your home area and take some readings with the app. <coughs> And we just asked you to send it in. Because some of us on the task force were asking, look, 63 is too much, 72 is too much, 85 is too much, not enough, da, 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 da. But some of us were asking, well, well, what the heck is that amount of decibels? Because that's what our current code uses, decibels, right? So we asked you uh, to kind of uh, send in your numbers. Uh, we haven't uh, fact checked. We're assuming an honor system here, right? We're, we're using the honor system on these numbers. Um, but we looked at the ambient noise, air conditioners, dishwashers, the washing machine, the dryer. We even asked you to turn the TV on your normal, right? And then we asked you to turn it, uh, turn it up so that it, it's too loud for you, right? It's too loud. Uh, which again is subject to everybody's hearing, and we all know that. Look, it's not uh, daytime, front yard, daytime, backyard, nighttime, and, and stuff like that. So we took your numbers. Um, not everybody was able to get it in, and, and it's okay if you want to send it in after, you know, late. We won't dock any points for that assignment. Uh, but this is what we have so far, and we're getting average. Uh, do we have an average? Where's the average number? I mean, it's a spreadsheet that's always averages. All right. Um, all right. Well, you didn't, you didn't you didn't leave me the top row up there. All right. You got to you got to work on that. So the first row average. Ambient. Is ambient around, is it the 40? 40. 40, okay. And uh, I'm not going to be able to do this without the headings. All right, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Three space, top row. Yeah, three space, top row. Here we go. All right, if you're asking me to be our expert on, um, on this, that's going to be tough. Review, is it data? 
Freeze Paint. Data Freeze Paint. View. Where are you? View. Is there a view? View. Thank you. I need a, I need someone, where is it? Freeze Paint, boom. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm getting an extra cookie later. All right. Thank you. Uh, ambient noise, 40. Air condition, these are averages. Just taking what you've given us, that's it. You can take it for what it means or not. It's not, don't, don't, don't say this is all exact. Air conditioners, 47. Dishwashers, actually I'm reading the top green. Should I be reading the bottom green, I mean? No, the top. Top green, yeah. Dishwasher, 46. Some of you have uh, quieter dishwashers. Washers, 54. Dryer, 57. TV, usually around 56. TV, too loud, 70. Daytime, 36. Front yard. Your backyard is about the same, 36. Nighttime front yard, 43. Nighttime backyard, 43. Okay, that's just using the data that we all kind of input here. Anybody have fun with that little app or not? Or was it confusing? Anybody spend more than like 20 minutes on this assignment? No, okay. All right, Colleen, I thought you did. Okay, all right, okay, well, Part of this was just to get some numbers that we see around the house. Now, is the app a scientific calibrated instrument? No. Um, I will tell you though, our team did some with both readings. Is that up here? The, the, the three readings here, those are with the meter. With only. the meters, with the meters only, okay. And we did that just to see the average. So using the calibrated meters that the code officers are using, right, you'll see the app had a delta and again, this how many data points we're talking, but 45 versus 40, 47 to 47, that one was kind of close, but again, that's different air conditioners, uh, you know, three of them, uh, 39 versus 46, and so you can, you can look to see uh, the difference. And the reason we did that, right, we, we talked about this, is we know many of our residents in town, and including the businesses, are trying to understand what's going on. And not every one of them purchased a $100 or $200 calibrated uh, audible meter. They downloaded a free app that if you look at the app, it tells you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's probably awesome. But we just tried to say, we know that there's uh, a resident out there that might be calling and says it's 64 dBs, so they call it in. But we may get there and it's not exactly 64 dBs. We're using a calibrated meter taking a decibel reading. So there's a little bit of difference there, but it also says they're not that far off if, again, this is just a small sample of that. So I'll open it up for discussion. For a, one, one more oh, comment. I missed here. something. So you can see my name. I, I listed it twice, one time with the phone and then one time with the meter. So I stood at my house at the same location with both devices, my phone with the app and my calibrated meter. And I recorded that just, you know, so you guys can see that. Because again, as Mike said, when we are comparing the averages, we are comparing two different houses, two different environments. Here, this, these two rows are exactly the same location, same area. So just again, for your info. Now, thank you, I mean, that's a good point. Now, I'm not sure that we can make any real decisions based on this limited, unscientific data we did think as a group, remember our last meeting? I think it was a virtual meeting. Thought this was a decent exercise to at least try and, and start a conversation. Uh, but I'll, I'll just open it up to the task force now. Anybody that has any comments or questions about this. Now, this is the first, you, you know your data, because you, you sent it to us. But now you're looking at some other people's uh, recordings. Does this, does this get us anything? Is this something we need to work more on uh, does this mean, I mean, yes, it was a great exercise, just throw it away, it didn't really help us. What, what do we think? Anybody want to jump in? I throw it away. Throw it away? Throw it away? All right, throw it. We, have, we have one vote for throw it away, but you can't just vote, you gotta explain your vote. That's the, it, what, what, what it reveals is the, the, the wide di difference between people's perception of sound. What is one person's loud TV versus another? Uh, I mean, you're watching, these, these are pretty broad differences on that sort of thing. Like, uh, like, that's a good point. So it's loud to you, may not be loud to me. I may need it that loud just to be able to hear it. Well, and I, what, where, where are you measuring from the dryer? Five feet from the next room in your bedroom? I, you know, where? Yeah, we, we, when we gave the assignment, we said about five foot. Now again, it's 
if you can't or you don't have that distance, obviously you might be closer. But yeah, we gave you general instructions. It wasn't again. No, I get it. I get yeah. It. I don't, did anybody go to the next room, close the door, and then take the reading of the equipment that they were doing? I hope you didn't do that. That's a little. No, I, all right. I wanted to check it out. You know, what I was surprised about was that it was so quiet. I thought, because when I'm listening to like the washer and the dryer and all that, it, and it's moving up, it's higher, but it really wasn't that high. So I was sort of impressed how quiet it was. But also, then I got really curious because we have traffic issues in different parts of the day. Then your your noise, you know. Yeah. Thing. But th that's what just surprised me. I don't. We can't use the data, but it, it made you aware of, especially when you have new appliances, how quiet they are compared <laughs> sure. to the old ones. Sure. So. Okay. Now, uh, any, anything else? This is open for discussion, comments. Yeah, I, I think it just shows you how easy it is to. To be at the you know at the top of the decibel reading. I mean, so put the TV on. I mean, it's just it's almost like you're already in violation. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to you know. You know my TV, in some yeah. cases, I mean, not I, I get it. again, like Chad said, it's just all over the place. But in some instances, it shows you how easy it is to to hit that mark. Yeah, it's interesting. That, yeah, the, the, I guess the TV normal is pretty good. I mean, some of us like it at 79, others like it at 50, I guess. Like I said, what, what, what's loud to you might not be loud to me and vice versa. Of course. Yeah, I, I think we, I think, yeah, we know that. I you mean, also see who has nice appliances and who doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. I think they charge more for the quieter. The quiet the quiet yeah. there, right? Okay. All right, all right. Um, all right, Any, uh, anything else? Now, We'll, we'll, we'll put this uh, with some big qualifier. This is not a scientific, this was just a, but I mean, I'm, I'm gonna post this for you guys to all see. I mean, I hope our community members, when you look at this, don't take this as scientific, right? This is just an exercise we did to try to uh, take some readings around our houses. Uh, and I'm sure, when I look at our, our sign guy, we're gonna have to talk to, I think John's over there. They're gonna yell at us for doing this. We probably set ourselves back, I don't know, uh, a few, a few, uh, uh, or so. Um, okay, well that was that just the exercise we did. I, I would say if, if you didn't submit anything, um, uh, feel free to send us your data if you want to. If you don't want to send in assignment uh, results, that's fine too. Uh, we'll see if this helps us in the future or not. Does that sound about right? All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to move a little bit from the sound demonstration. We were talking about maybe doing a sound demonstration like taking out the app and taking out some meters, cranking up some music. I'm not sure it's going to get us any more than what we just had. I think it's more important because we do have uh, a, a couple of uh, gentlemen here that we're going to ask to just uh, maybe talk a little bit about. And uh, they've been, you know, we've had, we've told this group. We've been looking for someone with a little bit more sound experience. Uh, in the real world, the science behind it, some of the real world issues that they've seen maybe in other jurisdictions or what have you. Uh, so, I mean, I'll ask you to introduce uh, the, 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 two, the two members. Uh, you don't mind if we ask you to talk for, you know, right? But, okay, I'll overview it. John, you're willing to help us out, right? All right, put you on the spot, okay. All right, I mean, I'm gonna hand it over to you and then hand it over to our speakers. So again, yeah, we have two experts here. I'm glad we, we, we got them and they're willing to help us out. So I'll turn it over to RB. Uh, that's what he likes to go by. But he can talk a little bit about himself, uh, you know, his expert experience, and then he can talk a little bit about sound, DB levels, and uh, things like that. And we can again ask any questions. I mean, we can use this or that. No, it's live already. Uh, just so you know, we've we've gotten tickets on the Riverwalk about five times from this microphone since we started uh, in this room. Um, I would say that the uh, the earlier chart shows that your app is probably uh, the average home app is, is off quite a bit from a calibrated sound pressure level meter. And if yours are 100 or 200 dollars, a, a professional calibrated microphone is about 1,400 bucks. So you're, you know, they're all going to be a little bit off. But my name is R.B. Blackstone. I'm a recording engineer, producer, musician, uh, sound designer. Kind of feel like that makes me uh, sound like I'm in an AP meeting. Um, I've uh, uh, 
did some consulting at Downloadome, uh, worked with Chick Corea and Ricky Skaggs and designed 14 studios and helped people with sound problems and uh, have some considerable background in this. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about was just an overview of some of the concepts that you're dealing with. First thing is I think that the task force is misnamed. Um, what we're talking about measuring is sound, and you hit that right on the mic. What we're talking about is measuring sound, whether it is noise or whether it is music, is uh, subjective judgment. Um, if you take your, uh, if you go to hear the Beethoven's Third Symphony, that's music to me. But to your 14 year old who wants to get back to Facebook, it's just noise, it's in the way, right? And so um, we need, we need noise ordinances and noise control for things like uh, drill presses and industrial machines. We need sound management for music and things so that we get along. Um, I've probably been a perpetrator when it comes to being too loud. I've also been someone who couldn't sleep because it had been too loud. So I'm on both sides of, uh, of this discussion. Um, Many of your, uh, the part of the, well, let me see here. So the sound level meter, making a proper sound level meter um, uh, measurement is not trivial, which is why it's good that officers are not carrying a sound level meter, because you have to have some knowledge of what you're measuring. Um, if you're an engineer, and I mean, we'll, we'll agree with this, I'm sure. If you're an engineer, it's very easy to make the wrong measurement. And um, the fact that those are all over the map shows that. Also the fact that statistically you have um, a self-selected sample of people who probably have nicer houses than, than a lot of people. My house at, at you know, two in the morning on a seaway is 50 or 60 dB because of the highway that's nearby. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing to do about that. I know we gotta get, people gotta get here somewhere, right? So um, uh, sound, if you don't know what it is, it is uh, compression and refraction of air. It's not actually air moving. Uh, tr sound travels about 770 miles an hour or something like that. And, um, and uh, if it was actually wind, we'd all be, we'd be gone, right? So sound is, is, uh, is just uh, compression in the air. And, and it will find a way out if there's a hole. You can put, uh, 30 dB lost door in the wall, and if you don't seal it, you will do nothing. Um, so a lot of the businesses that are having trouble managing the sound just need to talk to windows. They just need to manage um, uh, uh, some of the some of the structure um, and so that you know that when the door closes, it actually seals. Um, sound is uh, travels 1,128 feet per minute, sea level, yada yada. And what that means is if you've looked at an equalizer on, on, your, uh, 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 on your stereo or something, mid-range, right around 1K is the center. And that's, that wave is about a foot long. Up at the top, the wave is about an inch long. Down at the bottom, the base wave is 20, 40, 50 feet long. And so you might, you know, maybe you want to put egg, egg crates on your wall or do something to improve sound. Besides um, um, needing the fire marshal to talk to you, um, they won't do anything because they don't see that with sound wave at all. Um, so, um, okay, so the way sound propagates in free space is it drops off. We've heard the DB thing uh, pass around uh, quite a bit. Decibels come from uh, uh, Alexander Graham Bell which named the bell that was a measurement they used in Bell Telephone. And it's since been used, uh, turned to decibels or tenth of a decibel of a bell. And it means nothing unless it's related to something. For um, decibel sound pressure level is, is uh, decibels related to the threshold of hearing. And um, uh, uh, when, you, uh, when you look at one of these readings that says decibel SPL, you have to, it, it has to be a calibrated microphone to be correct. And there are, there are two different ways to listen. There's, there's a C weighting, 
which means that it, it, it records every, uh, everything at the exact same volume. And that's handy for uh, doing measurements of speakers and things that you're doing with the instrumentation. There's an A weighting that more closely approximates your ear, which is the correct weighting for them to use uh, when they're measuring uh, locally. And uh, uh, the, uh, every time you double the distance from the source that you're at, the sound goes down about 60 dB. So if you're five foot from the dryer um, and you're out in the middle of a field in a free field and you step 10 feet away, you can see the sound level go down. And another 10 feet away, you know, uh, I mean five feet away to 10 feet, then you double the sound. And in order to get the same amount of drop, you need to go from 10 to 20 feet and 20 to 40. So when I see noise organs say we measure at 80, we measure at 100 feet, but now we're going to measure at 150 feet, you, you aren't really doing much of anything. So where you measure the uh, sound from is very important. I'm sure nobody measured the dryer from inside the dryer, but I'm sure that's a lot louder than it would be at five feet, right? right. Um, I, our, the way our current um, um, ordinance is written, the measurement is taken taking at the property boundary of the person creating the noise, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So that means that if you're in the middle of an industrial se se uh, uh, section and there's nobody's house for half a mile, you're still judged by your volume at that location. That doesn't, that, that might reflect um, a noise code compliance point of view, but it doesn't reflect the community getting along with each other view. And um, I, I think that the, um, this, is, this is, things I've come up, up to this point are, are, are mostly facts, but that, this is my opinion. I think that it should be measured at the complainant's boundary or the nearest uh, property boundary that's not a city boundary. Uh, so that you actually have some measurement of how much they are affecting other people's lives, not a measurement of how loud they are one foot from the front door. Um, uh, there's a club on St. Mary's that got uh, a ticket and I was happy to, to observe it. Um, the band was not playing. The, um, the code compliance officer took a, uh, wasn't before the code compliance officer, said that. Um, uh, took a reading with a bus right next to it. And they didn't realize it was a bus right next to it. So the, I'm sure the reading was, was way out of whack uh, based on that. I think that it would be helpful if each sound recording, each SPL measurement was accompanied by a, an audio recording so that you could ascertain what was being measured. Um, there's also, uh, I remember another place that got a ticket on a Sunday because um, of the noise complaint, they weren't open. And so there are, uh, uh, like you mentioned earlier, multiple complaints. I don't, I don't think you're, like we would track a computer IP address. I don't know if you track the complainant's phone number. But there are some people that just make, you know, um, uh, their time to call in every day and complain about something because they don't like the idea of it. You know, um, so anyway, to me, um, in, in my home, in our homes, we want to have a quality of life and we want to be able to sleep and, and it's important for health. I also think that um, art and music are required for me to have a quality of life. And so, um, You might want things to be quiet in your home, but, but musicians need to get paid so that they're not homeless and they're not making a lot of noise. So, uh, so that's the ear and perception of sound. You, you, sound um, is, 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 is uh, perceived by a person. So anything that you, that you uh, uh, hear is also involves your brain. So if you like it or you don't like it, you will have a different perception of how loud it is. Maybe I'm just going to stop here for a second because I want to give some time. I, I said, Don, I think you've given us some good information. I know uh, this is not the end of the discussion, but uh, Don, would you mind uh, saving up? KB, I want you to stay. I just want to make, make sure we have time for a good Q&A as well. Um, so I wrote down a bunch of information already, uh, and I want, uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, Don, if you could uh, uh, introduce yourself. And uh, again, I think it's important to have multiple uh, people here helping us with some of these key issues, uh, things like you know, how sound is measured and those type of things. So 
Uh, Don, you, can you introduce yourself a little bit, talk a little bit about your experience and some key issues that you see that the task force needs to uh, think about, uh, you know, the science of sound or, you know, the, the, the real life things that we're hearing. And again, we have multiple people here, both from, uh, you know, just you know, residents next to businesses, businesses next to residents, and, and in between. Uh, and then what I'd like to do is open it up for the task force to have some, you know, comments and questions. And I know, um, I didn't speak to the KB before, I know we did. I know Don had said, you know, this is something that you'd like to be part of moving forward. So this is hopefully not the last time we see you. I think that's the, the goal. Uh, they are volunteering their time, so not, we, we didn't pay them or anything like that. So, uh, but then anyway, John, if I could, if you just, uh, you, could, you could add or subtract from what we've heard, but anything you could add, is, uh, but to tell people who you are and what you're doing. Uh, I am Don Pitts. Uh, don't throw stuff at me, I'm from Austin. Uh, <laughs> I was the music program manager for the city of Austin for seven years, and this meeting kind of brings back a lot of memories. But um, under we, once we understood the psychology um, of noise and sound, um, and I've mediated a lot of disputes about whether to call it noise or sound, but I think it's 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 both, um, depending on what end of it you're on. But we reduced. Uh, sound complaints by 74% over three years uh, by introducing some practical policies uh, to really enforcement we found out is the most expensive and, and the not the most successful approach it's more about I mean we do enforcement but it was the regulation and the self-regulation and, and the smart policy uh, that included problem solving in the ordinance. Uh, you, I've said to many residents and businesses uh, that you can add 40 pages to the sound ordinance and it's more than likely not going to solve the problem unless you have the right policy that's going to allow for problem solving. Uh, so I do, RB, I, I agree with the Sound is very complex, and I think, uh, I think the challenge that cities have and is how do you regulate that? And because I think what I sense tonight is from the conversations that there's a lot of expectations now about enforcement. Uh, we had a, I had one other person besides me uh, that worked my department. We we had to review and sign off on 200. And, 27 outdoor music venues, as well as about 500 special events a year. Um, but it is possible. I mean, there is the neighborhood associations and the venue associations in Austin are now 95% biggest thieves. So uh, there is hope. So. All right, thank you, John. But I, I will say, well, Arby brought up a good point on the on the measurement. Where do you measure it? Uh, we debated. I think our ordinance in Austin is the same measure from the property line. Uh, this is where I think self regulation is 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 the key. The challenge with with doing it from the complainant's property line, we found out. Uh, we tried that for about six months. Uh, the judges came back to us and said, "This is we're throwing out every case because the, they've got good attorneys." That says, "How do I know it's not this, 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 or this?" <coughs> it's 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 hard. It's a challenge. Thank you guys both for being here. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Don, uh, and and uh, um, I'm sorry, Harvey. I was at a home delivery meeting today, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, all right, so the purpose today, as the task force has asked us, is to search out and see who's in sound, who knows some of the issues, not part of this group, uh, uh, you, know, you know, a sound scientist, someone who's been in sound, and, and I, we wanted to bring them here today uh, just to have some conversation, or at least be a sound, I won't say it, I almost said it, a sounding board, you, you got it, I know. <laughs> to be someone we can throw some questions at, or maybe help us ask the right questions so that we can do some research and get some answers. So I'm going to really open it up. I mean, I really do thank you guys for being here, and I really hope, I mean, in some conversation we've had, I hope you'll be part of this with us. Um, the task force is, is really trying to get as much information as possible so we can figure this thing out 
Uh, but I think you both agree, and you both said it a couple of times, it's very complex, which we all know. So I'm gonna just kind of open it up. I thought John and, I, okay. Okay, I got a couple, I'm gonna go this way around the room. Can I cover John? Okay. okay. Either one of you, yeah, you know what, respond to this. Um, sound, the, the, the main problem we have in our area is, is, is really the bass and the vibration. And, and that's not necessarily measured by the, the decibels. Um, and, and that really, that, you know, somebody can be out there screaming uh, loud, that, that doesn't really matter too much, but uh, especially when you're inside your, your residence. But the vibration <coughs> in the bass, it penetrates. And I, I don't even think the vibration sometimes, uh, I, I need to, somebody to comment on that or expound on that. Uh, I'm not sure that even a, a decibel readings uh, Can you feel it in your feet? Pardon me? Can you feel it in your feet? Vibration and sound there. So uh, the question, if anybody didn't hear, let me just repeat it quickly. I, I get this. Uh, I see some of you in the back kind of doing this for me. Uh, John, that's what's asked. The question about really vibration. Uh, we talked about decibel levels and stuff, but sometimes the challenge that a resident is facing, that maybe a neighbor to another property making some sort of, uh, uh, I'm going to use the term noise uh, or sound. We, we, I don't know. The chapter in the code is noise. Uh, I just have to go with that. Uh, but uh, John asked, well, what about vibration? Is that an issue? And, 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 and are you, what, what was your comment? Can you feel it in your feet? Is well, that's that one way to tell if it's vibration, yes. And another way to, to think about it is this. If your neighbor in your, if your, if your neighbor in, in, in the next door apartment, for instance, hits a two by four in the air with a hammer, it's not very loud. If they hold it against your wall, it's a lot louder. That's vibration. And, and sound travels at a certain speed and a certain sort of efficiency through air. It travels more efficiently, efficiency through solids. And so <coughs> vibrations are a tough guy to deal with. I would ask the question, where is it coming from? And is it transmitted through air? Or sometimes you can uh, lift speakers up off the ground and do some things to, to, to help reduce that transmission. But like the, the one, the, the, the one uh, uh, ordinance, you know, vibration 21, it's 2153. It basically um, it, it states shall become lawful for any person to create, maintain, or cause any ground or airborne, airborne vibration. So, you know, it, it com comes through the air as well as it could be around. So, you'll need to give the dump trucks and the trains a ticket every time they go by. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, got to be a good reason to limit it. And then, what, what's annoying, I, I compare this to like the Chinese torture drill. Um, yeah. You know, you, you lay there and every second a, a drop of water goes on you. You know, for five minutes, that's no big deal. And like the train comes by, the truck comes by, the, the bus comes by, but it's, it's temporary. But when you have this uh, constant um, base, you know, it, 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 it goes for, for, for hours. That's so let me, uh, a different kind of noise. Thank you, let me, so let me, let me, uh, let, me uh, let me just see what I can say. So John, I think, uh, so John read uh, a, a section of our code, that's already in our code. And we know, the task force knows we have to kind of find a way to address how do we, how do we measure too much is too much, you know, you don't have a, I think your comment was, John, we don't have a dB meter that can measure vibrations, or at least we're not using it right now. So let me, let me phrase it this way to either of you. Do you have experience with in, in any type of uh, noise ordinance or sound ordinance, sound mitigation ordinance, uh, of how to address if we get a complaint or a neighbor is saying to a business, hey man, that is some, that's some big bass vibration. It, it, it seems to meet the, the letter of a code. How do you want to even measure it or enforce it, but, but how do you mitigate it? Is that, is that something you guys have some experience with? I have, there's been several situations we had down, downtown where the buildings were- This is in Austin. Is in Austin. Austin, okay. Yeah. Right. Where we had the sound vibrations. Uh, up one building was up to the sixth or seventh floor, and the other one was up to like 12 or 14. Um, one of them was an easy fix. It was uh, when we researched to find out where the source of the sound was. Um, it was really a simple fix of just decoupling the speakers from the mm -hmm. wall and setting it on rubberized stuff. And the other one was a little bit more. Uh, complex, but we wound up solving it. But the policy that we installed was the sound impact plan, so that everyone 
had to have a permit. And the sound impact plan and review found some of those sound vibrations because they were just calling 311 before the citizens were just calling and it was kind of going nowhere. Um, but we would, that, that was how we thought of it from a policy standpoint was, was each location had a sound impact plan. So, so, vi so I'm going to take this. So vibration is fairly dumb, you know, as everybody here knows. That's one of the issues that we have to try to tackle. I mean, CCR tells us to tackle that. What do we do to improve if there is a vibration complaint or a confirmed violation, even if the code stays the same today, uh, or if it's tweet, whatever that is, not only identifying it and calling it out, right, but also maybe maybe some sort of mitigation plan in the code or requirement. So that vibration topic is one of the main topics we have on the list, John, and the task force. We all know that, right? Are the topics we have to continue to go through. Probably one of the more challenging ones, but I, I think, you know, that's going to be some conversation. And I'll, and John, I'm going to kind of put it to, we have to, like I saw it tonight, but I'll look to some of the business owners at the group is if someone complains, hey, your, your base or your vibration is really out of the norm or something, what would that conversation or what would that, what would that enforcement or what would that mitigation look like? I think that's going to have to be part of this discussion as we, when we get to that topic. Is that, is that about in the realm of what you're, you're kind of identifying now? And, and you guys, I think, Don, you talked about that. You've had some experience with that. And, I mean, you've been in sound for <laughs> forever. You said, I mean, it's not just about the noise. You said noise and vibration. Is that about right? We have to find a way to address that a little bit. Well, uh, we both were talking. He mentioned decoupling. That's what lifting it off the ground was. It's mm -hmm. really, with, yeah. I just put a, a different term on it. Yeah. And um, uh, it wouldn't be bad if the task force had a, a, a group of people that could come help diagnose the problem and, and work together to, mm -hmm. to solve it. Yeah. I also thought it would be nice if the sound, I would like to do a ride along with it one time, actually. but. Be nice if there was a community advocacy, advocacy kind of group that would go with the, with the people measuring it, and then you would have somebody who, who 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 is with them who says, "Yeah, it was annoying." I mean, mm -hmm. Whatever the number was, it was annoying. They need to fix it. Another 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 annoying like annoying is another difficult term, right? It's annoying to me, it may not be annoying to you, I, I, but I know what you're saying. So, okay, Don, I'm going to go to you next. Okay, and Arby and Don, thank Thanks. you so much for being here Thanks. today. Oh, no, no, Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here today, and I appreciate you all and your expertise. Uh, and that's, you know, touching upon what Arby was just saying. If we were to look at the list of the frequent calls, the calls that are made frequently on specific businesses, I would guarantee that it's the same businesses over and over again. Why can't we hire these consultants <coughs> to come in and whether do a ride along or consult with these businesses and help them to figure out how they can improve, whether it's their speakers, their sound system, their wiring, whatever it is. And let's solve the problem that way. And that way everybody at the end of the day is happy. I mean, we all have to coexist. And us going back and forth, it, it's not helping. But let's, let's find some solutions. And I think having these two experts it's a start. It's a great start, and I think it can really help us. So, uh, thank you, John. Uh, so, we talked last meeting about, uh, and we, we gave an update of the summary of the data, right? Um, we talked a little bit about grabbing the detailed data and certainly identifying some properties, both residential or commercial, right? Businesses or residential, that maybe have the largest number of calls in or confirmed violations, right? So we, we haven't really decided what to do with that yet, but um, so Donnie, do you think we should take a look at that and, and find some, I don't know, I'm gonna call it examples of some that have gotten more than one call or more than one violation and see if we can use that as part of a, a plan to mitigate what the real issue is. If it, is, it, is it as simple as turning down the, the volume or is it some other techniques that, well, and, and again, that, that they talked about? You know, I you know, assume that there was a specific placement for speakers and wiring and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, I, I, they are the experts. Sure. So why mm -hmm. don't we have them consult with the city to help these people that are getting cited? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if it's the same people getting cited every single weekend, mm -hmm. how is that helping anybody? How is that helping us? Mm -hmm. I like yeah, I agree because, you know, I'm in an area where there's a lot of 
other businesses around me. I have a highway next to me, and I've, and I've been inside multiple times. So it's like, they could come in here and say, you know what, it's not 100% you, it's 25% them or whatever. So just trying to help identify, except mm -hmm. the problem, I mean, and so right now, I just feel like I'm being targeted. And mm -hmm. it's because when I have five other businesses around me, maybe get off the same amount of sound, and sounds travel. So, Sergio, to that point, I have a, uh, one of the businesses that I have is a 1,400 person capacity music venue. Uh, yeah, I can't say that. Um, I think that if the issue is, are, are there treatments and things that we can do to achieve um, better harmony in the neighborhood? I think that self-serving, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at the number of business owners that would take reasonable steps to do that. Not all of them, but hopefully the good actors can outweigh the bad actors. My problem is gonna be um, taking these steps, is it going to do any good? How, uh, the steps that I take, are they offset by the fact that people need to caulk their windows or that we're adjacent to Tobin Hill, it's a historic neighborhood. A lot of the, a lot of those buildings don't have insulation. They're old houses. I, I live in an old house just up the street. Um, uh, I guess that part of my concern as a, as a business owner is are we, are we trying to address uh, residential concerns on a one-off ad hoc basis? In other words, I don't want to use the term fighting battles, but are we fighting 50 different battles with 50 different people in the neighborhood with 50 different houses and 50 different perceptions of what's loud and what's not? Um, I, I, I really am glad you guys are here because I think if we can get to a point, but you know, I, I, Mr. Pitts referenced it, I mean, the, the, the calls and the citations, it's just this silly cycle and it's wasteful and it's not really, it's, it's trying to treat the symptom without really getting to the bottom of it. I do think if there was something that, um, that, that we could collaborate on that said, you know, we're, we are going to do sound treatment, sound baffling, all this sort of stuff. I think that you'd be you find a pretty receptive uh, audience on the business side, and I know from some friends in Austin that a lot um, the music venues in particular uh, near downtown they had, they had to be halfway on a lot of things. And some of it was time, some of it was treatment. Uh, speaking for myself, I'm, we would be we'd certainly be open to that. I, mean, I think that's to me that makes it feel like we're moving towards a solution and not just continue to butt heads. I was struck by the number, the percentage you talked about your cases, your calls tracked by how much percent have you started? 74%. Well, and it's not the enforcement piece, but it's the, the, the policy piece and, and the going and evaluating businesses and, and working with them. So I'm with you guys. I mean, not in terms of yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm going to that, that sounds awesome. So, yeah. Hold on, I'll tell you, I'm going to get to Fargo and then I'm going to come back to you. Um, but before we do, I want to make sure my staff understands, because I think the task force, uh, you, you hit on something, Seth. I, I want to say the fact that the perimeter around you, and let's say the properties around you, and what there was an industrial example, was that you, Don? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, so there was an example of, well, what if the homes next to you are built a little bit differently and they're not, I think you said, caulked or and insulated? I think it's going to be a challenge for this group to come up with some recommendations that are, I mean, this is a city noise ordinance, right? Sound ordinance, noise ordinance. So how do, we, how do we come up with some either policy, procedure, rules that can be consistently applied? I know. That's one of the benefits of doing it around the property that's creating the sound noise, sound noise. So it's consistent, no matter if it's a brand new uh, insulated home that meets today's insulation standards or a hundred or whole. But I'm just putting a pin in that, right? So that, that's an important piece of the equation. Um, but I know my team is, is gonna have that on, on our notes, but uh, something for us to consider. I think I was gonna go farther than back to Sergio. My, is that right? Oh, oh Ari, you wanted to echo? Yeah, there is one, one, somebody said it's as easy as turning it down. And I think part but of no, I, I said that, I said, you know, this is really well, I know, it's just a very common, common theme, so I want to address sure. it. Um, uh, uh, when you have your stereo at home, you are complete control of the volume, you can turn it down. It seems like a really, it's a really simple thing, right? But he's, I'm sure he's dealt with this. And you, those guitar, you know, talk to the sound guy, you turn the guitars down, and the, the faders are all the way at the bottom, they're already off. So some of this noise, uh, can we get off, off, can we all get along kind of program, uh, what I think needs to involve musicians understanding how loud they are off the stage. Because until this, the guy that you want to pick on, who's at the soundboard, you know, uh, is is actually producing 80 or 90 percent of the sound in the room. He's not in control. You can turn the PA off, and the drums and and horns and guitar players, guitar players, guitar players, 
can be can be uh, way louder than the PA, and all the guy up front is doing is trying to get the voice up enough to where you can hear the words. So um, it's it's a multivariant problem, and, and yeah, and not one not. Thank you for that. I I'm not an idiot. I I only really understood like a fraction of what you said. So those questions <laughs> don't bring to me. Uh, about turning the volume down to nothing and stuff. But I'm going to go to Parker next. Uh, you got a mic, so you go. Uh, yeah, so the, I think the, with remediation, the city needs to bear the burden of remediation, not put it on business owners, because the city has created the problem by approving the COOs of properties that are adjacent to residential homes that have been there for 100 years. So I think that's something that needs to be brought up, is that the city should also bear some of the financial responsibility for the businesses to create a remediation uh, to improve sound for those homes. Some of these homes, you know, they, there was a real estate office and then a dog room. And then over time, it became a nightclub and a bar. And so you have these people that have been in these homes for, you know, years and years before those businesses were there city approves these businesses to operate with uh, amplified music and it changes the entire, you know, uh, uh, just quality of life for those people in those homes. So I think it's a burden on the city to help the businesses improve remediation. So it's not just on all the businesses. Sure. Okay. And uh, thank you, Parker. We, we wrote that down. I think that's a good time for the task force to talk about got more I think that's a, we may have heard a little bit of that in some of the previous meetings but that hasn't been elevated a ton so let's make sure we, we keep that as part of the discussion I, I'm going to start you well, I just and then to, Gemma I and just then need to touch upon something that Parker well hold, hold, I know I know hold, hold that I want to I want to give everybody I want to give everybody okay but I did say I was going to go start you next Gemma I'm going to go start you Gemma and Don you can let I just you want to clarify pass? my okay. statement I wanted to clarify my statement. Yeah, is that right? I wanted to clarify the statement. You, you good with that? Always good. All right. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Gemma. And I'm going to get right back to Gemma. When I stated that, you know, we could hire the consultants to come out and go to these businesses and let them know, you know, this is what you could work on. I'm not talking about now having the business pay for, you know, astronomical fees to get new wiring, new speaker system, new sound system. I'm talking about them just advising them. This is what you could do. Uh, maybe, you know, this speaker is in the wrong place. Maybe you have it pointed in the wrong direction. Uh, I know there are ways around it because the last thing our business community needs is now this new burden of having to buy a whole new sound system or wiring. So I just wanted to clarify. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying, you know, let's make the businesses pay. I, okay. <laughs> I think that's good clarification. I, I think I had that, but, I, but it's good to make sure it's crystal clear. Yeah, you have a mic right there. You're good. Right. So actually, uh, I was fortunate I found the article in the Nutty Brown Cafe in Austin, which led me to what Don's work has been. And it's really interesting because we're looking at mitigating kind of mitigate noise across everything, neighborhoods and stuff. So it's just not, you know, the bad bars or the good bars. It's having this knowledge of where to place speakers or, you know, really how to look. And I know in Austin we've done that. And that's why you've got less complaints. You really looked at it from a broader way and how do you mitigate noise. What fascinated me too was, yes, noise does sort of decrease. But when you look at it, like I know in the Nutty Cafe, when they look, what, why are certain houses get the noise and others don't? And so sound travels in a very complex way. And we need to understand it. Um, I'm just going to say I live in a residential, but the noise we get because I live in a park. And so the sound crosses a golf course in a river, and you could sing along in your home. And so, and it's a stone building, you know. So st the, for different ways, sound really does travel. And where to measure it, how to do it, how do we make everyone, you know, at least sing a little bit kumbaya here. And, and the, it fascinated me how just by replacing speakers in a different way or 
pointing down, we'll go for the businesses. Neighbors, the mixed uses we're doing. Are we really having the correct construction in the building if you want mixed use, you know, for the neighbors upstairs so they're not complaining? I don't know what to do with neighbors and neighborhoods and partying, that's, that's sort of beyond me, but I think I would welcome your help. Thank you. You're experiencing a really cool thing. You know how people say you can always hear well over a lake? It's because sound continues to bend back down towards cold. So, so uh, uh, what you're hearing across the river and across that is, is that same effect of being on a lake. And that's not something a person who is making sound has anything to do with. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gemma. Uh, I think, uh, Sabina, you had your hand? Okay. I'll give you this. Thanks. This is uh, Sabina Ryan with Eagle. Uh, I just want to remind the task force to. Uh, the, the focus is not exclusively on businesses, it's across the board. And if you will note on the statistics, and it's been proven out by the pilot program, over 63% of the complaints are coming from residential properties. And so uh, I would caution the group from focusing too much on this business versus residential. We need to put in a policy in place that can be applied across the board regardless of the type of structure that is emitting that noise. Yeah, I mean, All right. I, oh, I, go ahead. I, I, and I, and yeah, I agree. Just use the microphone. But I think, you know, um, you know, again, I'm in an area where it's, it's becoming a lot denser, and it goes back to what kind of, you know, uh, urban, you know, not life or culture that we want to live in. And, um, I think I think a lot. Of, it seems like everybody kind of agrees that you know, hey, let's use this as fact finding. Let's let's use it to collect data. Let's get professionals involved. And right now, it seems like businesses are just you know constantly getting cited or constantly getting attacked, or we're constantly being targeted. And so, um, I think I think maybe shift the focus is to hey guys, let's work together. And it's like Chad said, I think I mean, nine nine percent nine of us are willing to work with, with you know our residents because we rely on their business. To support us, that's how we pay our bills. And to come in and work with the city, and I think there's 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 a there's a middle point there. Sure. All right, I'm going to do my little time check. Right, we got about 7:30. Typically, we do about 7:40, and then uh, we kind of bled into um, we bled we bled into the uh, questions from task force members. But we got about 10 minutes left of that, so we're going to open it up to the community to offer any uh, comments. Uh, and then try to wrap it up uh, by the 8 o'clock so everybody can get home. All right, so this is time check. That's all it is. Just yeah. a quick clarification to Don. I'm going to ask you to do this. We should have a mic up here for you. Just a quick clarification to Don. Did you say in Austin you are permitting, <coughs> or they are permitting? Yeah, but the, yeah, the music office. Music you know, office. I, was, I had a, we were given the responsibility to do all the sound permits. So permitting is in Austin. Yes. Okay, because that was very extensively discussed and dismissed so far. So we'll come back to that. I Thank will, you. I will ask. Thank you, John. Uh, just, just to clarify, John, nothing's been decided by this group. Nothing's been decided. All right, we worked right. hard for several months. Correct. Right. So nothing right. is on the table or off the table, whichever way you look at it. So, but I think the permitting issue, as you just mentioned, is something that you know. I think there were some other cities, you said Austin, and we, when we started the discussion, Houston had some format. That, that's going to be something for the task force to consider, right? But maybe it hasn't been addressed satisfactorily to you, but it hasn't been dismissed. I'm just going to call you on that one a little bit just to be fair to everybody in the room, okay? Uh, but good point, though. I think that's a good point, John. Thank you. Uh, all right, what else? Come on. I just want to comment on Don's. You got a mic right there? Can you? Yeah, yeah use that one. Um, Thanks. I think last time, I think we saw seven establishments that had multiple citations. And um, I really like her point, because I think all of us here uh, realize that we're not talking about most businesses. We're talking about a, a select few. And, and it, uh, it, it, you know, it's like when you supervise people, you, you spend 80% of your time on 10% on of the folks, you know, either good or bad. And it's sort of the same thing here. So I think. You know, we sort of know some of the, the bad apples, if you will, 
we focus on that, and I think a, a lot, at least from the business side, uh, a lot of this is solved. Okay, the, the, the residential thing, that's, you know, that, you know can't, 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 can't you know, run all this down, but anyway, that's just my comment. Thank you, John. I, I, I'll just say, I think the task force has been fairly consistent from the beginning that whatever we end up coming up with, and I'm going to look for some consensus on this, this concept, if we change anything in the ordinance moving forward, you know, in our politics procedures, clearly the main focus would be on repeat or multiple violators, uh, you know, but, but, just, but, but we have to define what that is. Like, what is that? What is that seven or so out of a hundred or whatever it is? Is that is that the still what we're looking for is some improvements on it, but it's really, you know, we need to find something for the repeat violators too. It, it's something that is, hey, help us help you. Let's get into compliance, but if you still don't, whether you're a house party or person or a business, there, there should be something in the ordinance to address that. Is that, is, am I not on the same page with that? And that's what I've been saying since the get-go. You know, let's focus on those bad actors. Let's help them. Not just not, let's not just go out every weekend and cite them. Let's help them. Let's educate them with these experts. I resent the term bad actors and bad apples. We've been cited for something, and we're going to aggressively start fighting this in court because it's not going to hold up. They are going to be thrown out. You can cite me every day for jaywalking. If I'm not jaywalking, then I'm not breaking the law. And I think that you're going to find a lot of resistance with business owners. When you're saying that we're breaking the law, and we don't believe that we are. Well, We've been cited for a violation. We're not in violation. We do not believe that we are in violation. Yeah, and excuse yeah. me for using that. No, I, 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 just, I understand. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm with the business community. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? I didn't, uh, I thought I was going to get a lot more head nodding on my, on my content, so something we'll continue to work on. Uh, but we got a few more minutes before I open it up to you. John. I just wanted to share with the committee that I, I had forwarded some comments um, to developmental services specifically related to a pilot where we are looking at 35% response um, to calls coming in where we're, we're not even at a majority. Um, so there are an awful lot of calls that are coming in. We have specifically been working with the neighbors trying to encourage involvement and calls coming in. We actually have some neighbors in the audience who are extremely frustrated uh, with some of the responses from this Sunday that I also forwarded to you. So, so however it goes um, that the pilot is in effect, we are again appreciative, but the fact that we are looking at the types of answer, answering of calls and investigations, and then those investigations where we're actually looking at a much higher percentage of violations which are confirmed by peace <coughs> officers um, is something that it, we have, it, it, there, there are an awful lot of numbers here, and, and we, we need to be appreciative of that. Uh, the frustration with the neighbors where uh, this past Sunday, three separate neighbors with three separate calls in, each of them with responses absent the pilot program where we don't have officers to send out meters. Uh, led to significant numbers of frustration. Um, so again, not using the term bad actor, uh, but for the businesses here, we would love the help of the businesses uh, to interact uh, in moving forward. And, and there are neighbors in, 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 the, in, the, in the audience. I Part of the problem also is that the business owners aren't always there. So a lot of times it's somebody managing the place. It could be a new manager and they're, you know, they're going against the business owner's wishes. So then you have the business owners being punished also for a bad employee, you know, so. That's true, but ultimately, I, I, I wish, yeah, my managers, if, if they did everything I wanted all the time, my life would be a lot better. But, um, <laughs> I, but at the same time, I mean, I, I would say very seriously to residents, I'm accountable for that. You know, they're, they, they're answerable to me and you know, I have to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's. it's oh, I, I don't think that I can pass the buck to them. I appreciate you saying that. And yes, it happens. I mean, in particular, you know, you you um, telling a DJ to keep it, uh, t telling a sound engineer or a what he was describing earlier in, in that scenario, a band that's touring from Los Angeles, who's you know got a manager who's 
an egomaniac and wants his band's music up louder and they're doing it without our consent. I mean, that things like that happen, but I, I would just say as a gesture of good faith that it, it's, it's on us to do better to the residents on that. It's not enough for me to say, well, that was, that was my manager, that wasn't me. I had my feet up in my quiet estate. Well, you guys are getting I just want to make a comment that, that I mean, maybe that's the wrong term, but um, you know, it, it, it's annoying to a number of folks, um, and, then you, and you're welcome to you know say it's not. I, I was a, uh, I handled a lot of uh, sexual assault stuff when I, when I worked, and you know, I heard this over and over, especially. I'm picking on males here, but uh, that's I, I didn't sexually harass her. Well, it's not what you thought; it's what the lady thought. Okay, I mean, you know, I sexual. With that. Well, sexual harassment. Just because I don't think I'm sexually harassing um, somebody, it's really not what I think. It's what they perceive. Yeah, we'll let the court speak. It's the same thing there. there with the annoyance with this noise and vibration. Okay. So. All right, we can find time for one more quick comment if anybody wants to take it out of the chat box before I open it up to the community. Um, uh, anybody? No one wants to go last speaker. Uh, last speaker. Some, something we also got to consider is, you know, what if it's not really the music that's making the noise? You know what I mean? Well, I mean it's it's not, it's not, not, something we got to think about is what if it's not the DJ or the band making the noise? Okay, so. What would, it, what would it be? Give me an example. So, for example, say, you know, Jack, 1,400 people, I can fit, you know, 1,000 people in my establishment. I, I get a portion officer to come and, and take a reading, but all the noise is coming from the people talking. People or, talking. Or, or, okay. or a car is driving by. You know, so I think it's, the, I, I feel that there are instances where that does happen a lot of times. Sure. So. I mean, that, I think that's something we need to consider. Like, how, does, how are we going to address that? You know, as we move forward with either enforcement with the current ordinance, we tweak the ordinance, right, and all that other stuff. Okay. I had a good. Oh, one quick comment. Yeah, one more before we get there. You got. You do. You have like one more minute. There you yeah, go. Quick. All right. Listen. Think back. The last time you went to a macaroni grill or a restaurant, and you left, and your voice was tired because you were been yelling back and forth. <laughs> that you don't do that until 86 or 88 dB. So that restaurant. You know, of which probably 85 or 90 percent of the sound was people and dishes and not music, is is an example of something that would, would have blown by all of these these noise violations, and you went there voluntarily. But that so noise that, wasn't at the property line. I, that yeah, doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. Yeah, that, 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 that's nonsense. To me. That was my comment as well. So that's inside the establishment, not outside, and not at the property line. I'm, I'm just just saying what what it is that that, yeah. that you perceive in my head. Yeah. I know what you said. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I just don't think it applies to right. anything we're doing. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you also think about patio bars. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's the thing. There's there's the chance you're not closing off the patio. Well, okay. I'm saying right. that, 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 that new noise can be toxic. I I I understand. And, and first of all, thank you everyone, and thank you uh, to John Harvey. I mean, I think. Having a little bit different perspective, experience, expertise on this issue, I think is going to help us. It's already challenging. But this is the time of the evening, and I feel like I'm locked in. I'm going to try to talk to our community <laughs> members that, that made it in here. All right, so we have time. And Rick, you raise your hand first. OK, I'm going to, if you're near me, just give me a nod, raise your hand, and we'll try to get you a mic. And we'd love to have some comments uh, for the group and uh, for us to help uh, move this along in the next couple months. So I have done a little research as well in this uh, because. Oh, okay. Rick, uh, Rick Shell, Tobin Hill. Uh, I have done a little research on this as well, and I've taken a look at some different things. Uh, one of the things that the task force needs to consider in their discussions is that when you increase decibel level by three decibels, you are doubling the energy that is being emitted from that sound, um, and so. You know, it doesn't sound like a lot, three decibels is not big of a deal. In the example that we were looking at earlier where, where you were in an industrial complex, for example, if you have one machine working at 90 decibels, you have another machine that fires up at 90 decibels, it doesn't double. You're now operating at 93 decibels, right? Because it doubles for every three decibels that are being used. So it's one thing to think about with the task force is to make sure that when we're talking about levels and measurements and those types of things, that you're talking about the energy that's being displaced outside of the property that's being evaluated, right? And so if they're at 
70 or 75 or 80 decibels at 11, 12 o'clock at night, uh, the house three or four or five houses away is still likely to feel the effects of that sound and that energy on their property, even though the decibel reading will decrease over that space, which is what you were talking about. So again, it's just one of those things. Um, you know, the fact that you all are investigating 35% of the calls, that tells me that if we were to reverse engineer that and multiply the number of citations and the number of calls being actually cited uh, at 100%, that number would be significantly higher. Um, and I'm not sure that that's necessarily what we want. Um, we would much prefer to have folks working together and, and trying to find the solutions. Uh, but right now, that's what we've got. And so I think that the community is still expecting that those enforcements are, are going to occur. Um, I was disheartened to see that 189 instances were not cited um, because I think that would, would have maybe raised some eyebrows or some, some thoughts on things. Thank you, Rick. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to go back to us. I just hand it first. Is that all right? There we go. Hello, Tom Spotter. Uh, I see a lot of good business owners in here. I'm a business owner, and I'd like to talk about the, the task force and something that happened in weeks ago, uh, there are several businesses, and I think you were talking about this too, there's, there's several businesses right across the street from us, okay? Not to mention the street that I'm talking about is Broadway, and it's a very busy street. Uh, we, we've had sound testing with uh, experts that have gone around and done all kinds of sound testing around our business, because we always work with the neighborhood. Uh, we've built a big wall in the back uh, to keep the sound I invested in a $10,000 sound system uh, that we can totally control and my staff has no access to it. So the staff can't turn it up. We set it where we want it. Um, and uh, we do everything we can to work with the neighborhood. And, uh, and whenever a problem ever comes up, I mean, uh, one of our neighbors right here is John Brenneman. And the reason why I got the sound system was because of his uh, vibrations and the, uh, he was having issues there, which weren't coming from my business. Okay. But I still did it because I want to work with the neighborhood. <coughs> well, I got a citation a few weeks ago for a noise violation. And it was just how you guys described it. It was a code compliance came out. They stood out about 20 feet from the front of my business and took the reading right there on the edge of Broadway, which we already know the ambient sound on Broadway is between 65 to 70 decibels. It's already over the limit. Like someone had mentioned earlier that the business was closed and got a ticket. We could have been closed and we would have got a ticket back there. Not to mention, <clears throat> also talked about one of the businesses that uh, is a big problem that has all these problems is right across from us. They're so bad that 150 feet away, across the street, in the back of my business, on my patio, we hear their music over our music which is detrimental to my business. A lot of people complain, and when the bartenders who have no access to turn up the music, don't turn up the music, they get up and leave. But my problem is if I let them do it, they turn up the music, now we become a problem for the neighborhood, and I won't allow that, right? Well, the co-compliance person came and took the reading right on Broadway. With that business over here, with their noise is so loud, as, I mean, they should have realized that's where the noise is coming from, but they took it right in front of my business. And then an hour later, an hour later, SAPD shows up and is giving us a ticket. Now I got on the phone with the officer and I asked him, are we too loud? He says, no, you guys are great. So why are you giving me a ticket? He told me I'm being ordered to give you the ticket because they got a meter reading of 68 and they said it came from your business. I know it didn't come from my business, okay? And they should have known it too, so I'm wondering what kind of training's going on with these officers because, um, like I said, we go to the nth degree to work with the neighborhood. And we've never got a citation for noise. 20 years. And now we have a citation and you know we're gonna go to court, we're gonna win. And my recommendation to you all is, you know what, the troubled business that is making all the noise, they're probably gonna win when they go to court too. Because they're gonna say the same thing. They took a reading right in the middle of all this noise. So how can you attribute that to us, okay? Now, that business is bad, bad actors. And I would love to see them go because they've been there about a year and a half. They get calls and the police 
them out. And a lot of times they come to my business because the neighborhood, they, they don't know. They just call and say, it's loud over there. The officers usually don't even get out of their car. They, they stop or they get out, oh, the noise is coming from over there. We're gonna go you know, talk to them. They'll go over there, the music will get turned down for about five minutes and the officers will leave and they'll just jam it right back. Bam. So, you know, and my, I mean, I'm in good feet. You've probably seen me. I'm very upset that I got a citation. And I, you know, and I'm also upset, like, let's just say we were too loud, right? If we were being too loud, that code compliance officer should come talk to us and say, hey guys, I'm getting a reading here that you're too loud. For number one, if we are too loud, I want to turn it down so that the neighborhood's not disturbed for another hour, okay? Or number two, to have a conversation with them and be able to be like, listen, that's not us. Where'd you take the meter reading right here? Well, obviously, we're right on the street here. You got a 68, and the ambient reading here is 65 to 70, okay? And it's less than that. And all the noise is coming from across the street there. I'll tell you what, give me three seconds. I'm going to run inside. I'm going to turn everything off, and we'll retake the reading. Something like that. But when we're not getting any interaction, how can we fix it? Or how can we show that it's not us, right? What you described is what every single um, business owner is dealing with right now. I'm very sorry for that. And I, we're, it's wasteful the extent to which we're going to have to go through the legal system. A lot of lawyers are going to make a lot of money off of this current strategy. It's also why the three business owner representatives that are sitting here right now are not the original three business owner Chad, Chad, hold on, hold on. Okay. I just, just, I, I, wanted, I wanted to finish up, but we got those people that want to talk to you. So I, I, we got your point, and I want right. to make sure that we got it. And, and so, I mean, you, you have me, a business owner that has $10,000 system to, to keep the noise down. We built a big wall in the back towards the neighborhood with the covering to keep the noise in. You know, we do everything we can, and, and then we get ticketed anyways, and I know we weren't too loud because the, you know, when I'm talking to the officers, I'm like, is it too loud? He's like, it's not. I'm like, well, it's the same as it was before. Well, we don't know that. Well, of course they don't know that, but I, they, my staff can't get into the system and turn it up. It, it, it's the same as it was. So, but, and I was like, how can you write us a ticket? And he's like, I'm being ordered to write you a ticket. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm on your side. We're on your side. We're on the neighborhood side. I mean, John's known me for years. Do, we do everything we can. If, if there's a complaint with the neighborhood, we're proactive and we do whatever we can. And I just feel like maybe some more innocent businesses are kind of getting caught up in this task force. What I was told by uh, them was that the code compliance officer was too afraid to come in. Well, just so you know, at that time, the two people that alerted us that someone came out there and took our meter reading were my two paid licensed security guards, you know, that are weapons and, you know, they, are, they don't feel safe to go up there with security. I mean, this isn't like a house party or something. This is a business. We have security and we need to have that interaction as a business. If they think we're doing something wrong for us to fix it, number one, or for us to explain to them that this noise is not coming for us, so you have no need to write us a ticket. I just hope that you guys can figure a better way to go about that. I mean, it's, 
I've been here, done that, but now I'm on the other side of the rock here, you know? And so I said, well, I better come and talk to somebody here when I'm going to speak with in, a, in the district office over there. And it, it just explain yourself. The way it was done over there is that they, I have a movie, you know, they, they came, took the meeting reading, they're in my parking lot. On the south side, toward the apartments, way back there, where the complaint would have come from, but it's a quarter mile, the length is a quarter mile. Uh, back when I was a state officer, there's a complaint. I know that Coca Plant is not proactive, meaning that they don't go out there finding businesses to go site. They respond to complaints, is what the director here was saying earlier, as I noted. Okay, so I don't know when this complaint was, could have been months ago, it doesn't matter. The point was that it was there. So they're there legally or for a reason. But they didn't take the reading from where the apartments were at or from who well, they contacted even a complaint. I would say, hey, Somebody complains, you don't have to give me the name, just contact them, take them to the meeting from their residence, their house, whatever. I don't have a problem with that. If it is a violation, come talk to me. It would have been great, you know, come talk to me and I'll do whatever I can to make sure. And this is just here recently. I've never had a problem before. Well, they took it from the south end and toward the, the creek side where the apartments are. Not a problem. They took it from the, the uh, I'm sorry, the east end. They take it from the south end where McDonald was at. Not a problem because there is no residence there. They take it from the front as you drive into the business, the highway there, they couldn't take the reading according to the supervisor here because it's too loud. They had to wait for the traffic to die down in order for them to get a meeting, a real meeting, a reading, just like the one on you know? But this is the highway. This is the highway, which is way too much. Instead, they went in next door, I mean, uh, to the north end, where the railroad tracks are, right there. We have a sliding, we have a, uh, big uh, carport door that was up, and that takes the, they take the read from there on the property fence, which is about 17 feet away exactly. And they said it was 68 decibels, or whatever it was, uh, it, whatever it was, they told the officer, so my manager calls and says, hey, I get a citation marks. I go, what? He says, for the noise. Well, I says, fine. Then, uh, I said, I was at home. Uh, the officer talked to me, he goes, hey, partner. He goes, because they know me, he goes, hey, we're receiving a citation, sorry, we'll be, if Coca Plans calls, no questions asked, you have to get a citation. They're not gonna, you know, if SAPD makes a call, they'll call and say, hey, can you lower it? We got a complaint from blah, 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 this and that. That I saw was a big difference, because Coca Plants calls, there is no, there's no black and white. I mean, there's no, 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 no gray area. You have to get a citation. So I said, partner, just get the citation. We'll go to court. I'm sure, you know, there's many ways we can fight this. There's gotta be not a problem. Here's my question to y'all guys. North of us, where the meeting, where the reader was taken, from there, it's a quarter mile to out of the street. There is no residence. The city owns all that property. They're doing all the renovation for the river, things like that. You know, there is no complainant. There is no complainant. It just, the also, the Coco Plans also went out there, took a reading at that point, the door is open, I can hear the music a little bit over. You know, not to tell what the highway is, which is right next to us, you know, that into consideration. I like what this gentleman said right here, because it could be any anybody can call. Anyone here can call. But I think that the media reading was done, of course, and that's what we're gonna fight is the, the noise on the highway along with maybe the music or something that thing. It's understandable. There is no audio video or anything like this. No one where we could go and verify it or something to that thing. I would have been glad to show me. Just show me, partner. You know what? Okay. Not a problem. I can see that. I've done it. I'm wrong. And that's it, I'll sign the citation, I'll have my guy sign the citation. Not only did it happen Wednesday night, we have a live band on Saturday. No complaint for no residents or anything else. I had the music facing the highway. It's facing the highway. They took the meter meeting, again, it was only from the railroad side. No people live, no one lives the old north side. <coughs> Went down the block, a quarter mile. No residents, houses there, there's two vacant houses there. If the businesses are closed, everything the city has to have because they're doing the renovation on the river. There is no complainant. There is no one saying that, hey, your music's too loud, blah, 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 this and that. Code went out there. Because of the violation at that end, we got an expectation. So I'm here today just saying that, you know, it's got to be, I, I like the idea of this task force. I've been on many task force before. I just think it's got to be, you know, this is what it's for. It's a pilot program. It's a pilot program. But there's a lot of ways that it can be uh, a lot, you know, improved. Uh, gentlemen here with the business and stuff, I can see it now being on my hand where 
I go, wow, now I've got two set things I got to do. And of course, we're going to go the legal way, and I'm going to cost me money. I know it's going to cost me money to fight these tickets to court, you know, because I'm going to bring everyone, you know, the focal point, everybody, you know, everybody. Who, who sent the people out to you? If there's no complaint? There's no complaint, ask for complaints. They will take you. The officer, what he got there? I <coughs> ask the officer every time I go and say, Porter, is the music too loud? I ask, he got, I know he got, I know the officer did too. Bro, is it too loud? He'll tell And you see, the, the, the cocoa plants in the property, on the property line, you know, I don't know, you know, they never walked away, they stayed in the truck or whatever. Okay, okay. I, I, anyway, thank you all so much. I just had to give my opinion there, and hopefully, we'll thank you for letting me speak this speech. Thank you, Martha. We'll have more time for okay. the okay. okay. So I just want to get to, uh, this is a time check, okay? I, I try, I've, I've really tried to try to get everybody out here at 8 o'clock, but we have a, this is a good group tonight in terms of, so I don't, I don't want to be here until 30, none of us do, but if we go a little bit beyond uh, two more minutes, I'm okay with that too, I hope everybody else is. So uh, I, I saw a couple other hands right here. I, I, I saw this hand first, then Mary back here, and then, is that okay? I'm like, boom, 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 and uh, maybe four or five more. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mel Laris. I live in the downtown area, kind of the Kingway area. But um, I just one quick question: Was it possible to get the, the make of the the decimal meter that the enforcement people use, so that others could buy yeah, one just like could, theirs? Yeah, we could put that. that Everybody okay with us putting that on our on our page? Or yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, yeah. put that on our uh, yeah. ordinance uh, task force yeah. page. And uh, just so you guys, yeah, I, I don't know about what I'm but yeah, we, we can get that. Um, exactly. If you do that, you might want to institute like a 5 or $10 fee and let them calibrate it for you so it really means something. Fair enough. That'd be great. Sure, that'd be great. But, uh, I won't charge anybody a fee for anything, I promise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah, that's, so. it, it would just be nice to be able to be using the very same instrumentation. Yeah. That, uh, but the other question is, um, why? Can't code enforcement just write a ticket when they go up? I imagine this has been a answered a lot, but um, I worked in the Ann Arbor City Attorney's Office for years up in Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we solved a lot of problems by the code enforcement people just coming out. Um, this was um, housing code violations, not noise, but same thing. And they just write a ticket, and, and that's it. I'm, I don't understand the dual process here, maybe someone can explain that. But the obvious solution would be if those folks were authorized to write tickets, the way they must be for high grass or tall grass or whatever, I assume they write tickets during the day, right? Okay, so the question would be, why can't they just write them at night and skip the calling the police who are gonna put it down on a level seven, understandably? Yeah, okay. All right, I, I think it'll be at some of our future uh, meetings because I know that's going to be discussed more. Uh, Mary, I think it was Mary next. Thank you. Is there a simple answer though, or no? Well, we, we've addressed it several times in the task force. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with you afterwards. Uh, but right now, at the, the start of the task force, we're trying on this policy procedures. Uh, we, we may make the tweaks as we move on to the rest of the task force. So, uh, but I'll, I'll talk to you in detail afterwards. Sure, that'd be great. All right. Mary. Uh, Mary Johnson, I live in my Vista Terrace right down the road from Tobin Hill, and this is a very intricate, in-depth subject. It goes beyond just the noise. Um, I think it, that crowd control is part of it, and I agree with Parker that some of this is on the city. I don't know what y'all were thinking, giving eight or nine bars a CO in a residential area. Um, this is I know that in the, on the strip down there, there's an angry mob. It's like a mob descends in this residential area. Neighbors have had, have had their windows broken out, and I don't know how you put that on the, the, the club owners when you have this angry mob. We've had one woman killed down there. Uh, a car has driven through uh, one of the restaurant windows. Um, you know, who's culpable here? Do we need more police down there? Because I don't ever see any police down there. I am terrified to drive through that area on the weekend. And just a note to the city attorney, it's like, I know that the bar owner that of the person that was driving that killed that woman is being sued, but at what point is the city culpable for part of this? And I just want to leave you with that. Thank you, Mayor. 
here, and then to that, the back corner again. Uh, my name is Alberto Sainz. Uh, apologies, I'm not the greatest uh, public speaker, but I just, to, I, I just want to give you guys my uh, history. So we've heard some of the uh, business owners, so this is an actual homework. I used to live on top of the uh, Altiza at the Grand Hyatt downtown. Am I allowed to say the, the business that was my bad actor? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So I, I used to live on top of the Altiza, right? And then in January came, um, and the, the, the smokes barbecue that used to be in uh, at Central Station, Sunset Station, whatever, they, because of uh, COVID, they ended up uh, getting a parking lot across the highway and turning it into a keg, basically, right? And uh, Sunday, it would start at three o'clock all the way till like two o'clock. Monday, they'd have their normal thing. Tuesday was uh, country night. Wednesday was their day off. Thursday was Tejano night. And then Friday, Saturday, and, and rinse and repeat, right? So I went to the business owner and I said, hey, now, I'm at the 30th floor, I'm half a mile away from you, and I'm getting readings from, I actually got them from Amazon, I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't buy the $1,000 thing, right? And I told the guy, hey, I can't sleep because five days out of the week, I'm up until two, and I can hear a DJ doing call outs, right? He's like, oh, we'll work for you, bro, no, no, we'll work, you know, we'll give you a free beer, blah, blah. I called him and I said, hey, it's pretty loud, can you turn it down? And he went from an 11 to 10, right? And then I'm like, hey, it's still pretty loud. And we went from a 10 to a nine. And I was a squeaky wheel. So then I said, hey, you know, it's still pretty loud. He's like, well, send me a, a, a video of what you're listening to inside your, your condo. And I did. And his response was like, hmm, right? He didn't say like, dude, you're just a very sensitive guy. And maybe I am, right? And after that, he never returned my text, right? So then I used to call three or four times a week and and, uh, you know, I'll get a call back from the officers and they tell me, dude, I, we're, we, we hear you paying, but we can't do anything about it. Uh, as far as I know, out of the three times, I would call three or four weeks, uh, three or four times a week. I don't know if that guy was ever cited. He could care less because, you know, he used to, I, and I, I read up on this, he used to pay 30K a month in rent at Sunset Station. Now he's got a, a kegger out in the parking lot that probably pays, what, a thousand bucks a month? I don't know, right? He can easily, go to court and, and, and fight it, right? I no longer live there, and, and this is how, this, this is not a trivial thing. There's another guy by the name of Clay, I'm not gonna say his last name, he, he owned one of the penthouses. Very connected dude, he, he emailed the assistant to, uh, what's his name? The, the chief of police, uh, McManus. Yeah, they had a very intimate conversation. And, and even that guy couldn't, couldn't you know, move the needle. He no longer lives there. It was so much that he, I mean, I know a poor guy sold his penthouse, but that's how much <laughs> it affected his quality of life. $1.8 million, he said, you know what, I'm done, and he moved. And I, I, I didn't want to sell my condo, but I leased it, but I wanted to live down there. So when people ask me, how did you like living downtown? You guys want to be like Austin, be dense, have a bunch of property, you know, taxes coming your way, that's how you guys get funded. I tell everyone, unless you're deaf or you like, you know, having, you know, two o'clock parties with your, you know, you know, people from half a mile away, do it, or else don't do it. So just, I feel your pain, it's horrible, but guess what? I no longer live in the place that I bought because of some dude who has a kegger half a mile away. On the other, yeah. Like on the other side of the highway, right? So you're talking about bad actors. This guy was a bad actor. He and could care less. From, we so. had detectives came out and took measurements from our balcony and the top of the building, and it was still so, exceeding the limit. It was like at 70, and this isn't early. It was like midnight, you know? Um, but I know I know that he is not a representative of every business, but it was definitely enough to get us to move, which is very unfortunate. Yes, Ms. Uh, you were a very good speaker, so, oh, all right, yeah. uh, I'm going to go back here, and then, uh, anybody else? Uh, I'm going to go back to you, so. I'm Greg Joby. I live on Hillard Alamo Street, and uh, bad actors for us are the CrossFit Gym and Bentley's Beer Garden, both of which are outdoor. Um, the gym is, of course, indoors, but they have their doors open wide during the day, blasting music and light voices. Uh, Bentley's Beer Garden is an outdoor place. 
I don't know why they moved into the neighborhood where there are residences um, like mine, um, where they play um, live music and recorded music at till two in the morning and don't seem to have any care about the people who live in the neighborhood. But I think this um, comment session of residents and businesses, that's just indicating the problem. It's not indicating any sort of solution. We can hear from every business person, we can hear from every residential person, that's not gonna solve the problem. So for the task force, I want to raise some issues because I think these are some of the things that, that are coming up. Number one, I lived in San Antonio 20 years ago, and now I'm back after 20 years, and I see the, um, the big change in downtown, uh, particularly with lots of residences, which is something that the city was trying to do. But zoning is a big problem. I live in an industrial area that's been converted into residential use, and so how do you tell the industries that are there, and how do you tell the residences that are there, um, you know, You've got to work together, you've got to reduce your noise. It's a problem of different types of businesses and people living right on top of each other. Um, I wonder if this is a good use of police resources. This seems like such a waste of police resources to send out for noise complaints. There's, there seems to, there needs to be a, a better way to do that. The response time for the police, is that really very effective? Somebody's having a party, a bar is playing music at two in the morning, and it takes two hours for the police to get there. What is that gonna solve? That doesn't do anything. Um, are the fines high enough for violators? Businesses are not all innocent. Bentley's Beer Garden makes noise, and they don't care. I've called in complaints, other people have called in complaints, they've gotten citations. Bentley's other bar is the one across from the street. That's what we hate. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm wondering if this, this citation process and, and hearing from businesses that we're just going to fight this in court and it's going to get thrown out, I don't know that this is very effective either. And I know from living in um, California that when you threaten a liquor license, that's when you get something that happens. Amen. When you threaten to take away the liquor license, that's when you finally get some change. So I want to mention that as something, too, for the task force to consider. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Clancy. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of San Antonio. One of my dreams was to move downtown. Growing up in San Antonio, uh, just FYI, I work for SASD, my athletic director. One of the places I really wanted to live was the Almost Tower that overlooks out in the state. Those are things that I have dreamed of doing. Now that I come, I'm an empty nester. We moved downtown. It's a great way to live. We love the party lot, we love the nightlife, we love the boogie, you know, miss, you know, the song. But one thing that has to stop, one to me is the infrasound the constant vibrations that emit from, we know COVID had its direct impact on our society. We've had more places now convert from indoor facilities to having outdoor arenas and, and facilities. We get that, we understand that. But everybody getting tickets is not a solution. That is not gonna solve our problems. But if we can live together and talk to each other besides going to code compliance. I think that's our best avenue. And this task force coming together, this is the first time I've come. I, I saw something on, my wife sent me a text, because she's the one that really is sensitive to sound. So we're, we're walking out wherever, and all of a sudden you hear that bass beat somewhere. She almost drops like she has PTSD. And, and she's threatening to move from the place that we always wanted to live. So I'm coming to this task force to say, hey, we got some problems, and the city did want to gentrify downtown. That was part of San Antonio 2020, the vision for all back. Well, we're there. We, we got to where we wanted to be, but we're gonna have to be harmonious in the way that we do things. 
So thank you all very much for taking the time out of your schedules to come and to hash out these. I have my list of bad actors, but calling them out by name for me is not going to solve my problem. So business owners, I know you've got to make money. And residents, we have to sleep. And, you know, that's all i got to thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I thank everyone. I know we're, we're over. Did I miss anyone that was really dying to? Okay. No, I didn't see anybody. Okay. So that gets us, I think, to the end. I mean, thank you, everyone. All right. Oh, uh, so as we wrap up, I do want to say thank you again to the task force. Uh, but, but also, I mean, this is, I think, probably the biggest community group in addition to the task force we've had. So. Thank you, everybody. I know it's uh, a super busy time of year, all that stuff, so I really appreciate it. Um, we have some homework to do ourselves. City staff will take some of this, um, prepare kind of our notes from the meeting. There's a couple action items I saw. The next meeting is scheduled for January 11th, Task Force members, so it'll be after the new year. Uh, we did at the last meeting, uh, just a reminder, uh, we, we agreed to kind of flip flop in person and then a um, WebEx a virtual meeting and then in person. Is that still uh, everybody's wish on this task force? Yes. Thumbs up? Yes. Do I have a general thumbs up? I mean, that was kind of the, the, the rules. Okay. Now, uh, for those of, the, those of you that are not part of the task force, uh, you, can, you can still participate. We'll have the information. You can participate and be on the WebEx. Uh, and the format will be similar. We'll have a lot of conversation some data, some of the new stuff or, that we've been talking about. And, and near the end of the meeting, uh, we'll look for feedback uh, from anyone that wants to weigh in, certainly via uh, the WebEx, OK? I think some of you have already participated like that in one of the previous ones. So again, I will say thank you to everyone. Certainly, Don, RB, thank you for being here. And I really look forward to working with you both. Um, and uh, so if you have any other questions or comments in the meantime, uh, we send them generally to city staff. Uh, Amin is here. We have our contact information uh, on up here, but if you have any questions, we'll be sticking around for a couple minutes. I uh, can't stick around for hours. The security guards will kick you out, I'm sure. Uh, but thanks, everyone. Uh, happy holidays. Be safe and have a safe new year.